In the previous video, we looked at the microscopic statistical origin of entropy for degenerate states, or states with equal energies. But as you know, many, many states do not have equal energies. They have distinct energies. So in order to get a formula for how we get the entropy when states have different energies, we're going to develop a formula called the Gibbs entropy formula. So we previously examined the Boltzmann factor for getting the probability of states. And that says that the, prob the uh, probability of a given state is proportional to the Boltzmann factor for that state, e to the minus energy of that state, divided by kBt, also equal to e to the minus beta energy of that state, uh, beta, the beta factor parameter that we discussed before. And this is consistent with the ergodic hypothesis that for degenerate states, they all have equal probability because if state I and J both have the same energy, then they'll have the same probability because it's proportional to uh, the same quantity here. Then to get the absolute uh, probability for a state, you would have to divide by the partition function, which is the sum of the Boltzmann factors for all the states of the ensemble. Okay, so given that we can get these probabilities and we get them from determine from what the energies are and what temperature we're at again these the probabilities between different uh, the probabilities between non-degenerate states will vary as the temperature varies and they'll they'll all be the same at infinite temperature but um, the quantity or the formula that we can use once we know what these probabilities are is that S equals minus the Boltzmann constant times the sum over all states probability of state I times the logarithm of the probability of that state. Okay, and this is called the Gibbs entropy formula. So what does this imply? So if we have a state, let's say state one, where the probability of being in state one is certainty, it's guaranteed. Therefore, the probability of all states which are not state one will equal zero. So the system can only be in state one. What will the entropy be according to this formula? Well, we'll have S equals minus K times B. We'll have the sum will be only of only over one state because all these other will all these others will have a factor of zero out here multiplying their value. We're going to have one times the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero. So zero times the Boltzmann constant is going to give us zero. So if you can only be in one state, if your system is entirely specified to be in one state, then there is no disorder at all your absolute entropy will be zero. And the lowest entropy possible is going to be zero. So this is the least possible disorder your system can have. You know exactly which state it's in, and it is in that state and only that state. Okay, and let's see what this predicts for an example that we would have seen from the previous video about degenerate states. So let's say we have four degenerate states. So degenerate states all have the same probability. And since there are four of them, their probabilities all sum up to one. So the probability of them all individually is going to be one fourth. And the probability of any other state would be zero. Okay, so what entropy do we get in this case? Is it consistent with our previous video, which predicts that our entropy would be KB log degeneracy. So is our entropy going to be KB log 4? Well, let's see. So we're going to have minus KB minus KB if I can get the right color here. Uh, well, 1 for 2 there. Minus KB sum I equals 1 to 4 of we're going to have PI 1 fourth times the natural log of 1 fourth. So this is going to give us uh, a factor of log 1 over 4 
four times, and each of them is multiplied times one-fourth, but when you sum up over all four, this one-fourth becomes a one, and what you end up with is minus KB of log one over four. But if you remember the properties of logarithms, where when you have uh, the log of one over X, that, the, that is the same as minus log of X. So with this minus sign out front here and this four on our denominator, we switch that to the numerator, add in another negative sign, that switches the sign there, and our final result is KB log four. So for degenerate states, this Gibbs entropy formula is consistent with our statistical formula that we discussed in the previous video. Okay, and for a final example, let's discuss a case which finally uh, applies this in some real way, which is non-trivial. We're going to have the probability of being in state 1 is 0 0.5, state 2, 0 0.3, State 3, 0 0.1. State 4, 0 0.05. State 5, 0 0.03. And states 6 and 7 is going to be 0 0.01. So check me here. This should add up to 1. I believe it does. But you can see here that most of the probability lies in this these first two states here and then kind of decreases uh, as we go up the chain there. So uh, this should give us a value which is you know somewhere around maybe as high as KB log 2, uh, maybe bigger, maybe smaller, but let's see what it predicts. So um, if you plugged it into this formula where you plugged in the did a sum over all these states for the probability of that state times natural log of that probability then multiply by minus Boltzmann factor I pl plug this into a spreadsheet and you can trust me or check my math if you like that this ends up coming out to be 1.29 KB. So the entropy is not much larger than one unit of KB and all of these states which have this smaller probability you'll see contribute a smaller and smaller amount to this total entropy. It's really when you have lots and lots of states or states that are also very near each other in probabili probability that this value will really start to increase. And of course, entropy can become very, very significant because when you have, you know, Avogadro's number of particles and you have e to the Avogadro's number of uh, states available to them, this entropy value can get quite large because the number of states you have accessible to you when you are a an entire mole of substance can become very, very enormous quite quickly, which is why uh, this natural log restraining the value of this entropy keeps it to kind of a finite amount, which does uh, play large roles in chemical reactions and, and phase transitions and things of that nature, but does not usually uh, dominate them completely.